Well, hey y'all. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while, uh, whether or not I wanted to do it, and I thought, no, I'm going to do it. It might be interesting to some folks. Uh, my daddy wrote a diary uh, when he was young, in his young teenage years. Uh, the first entry was uh, March the 12th, 1930. He was almost 13 years old, and he kept the diary till he was, I don't know, 16 or 17, maybe. And, uh, but I thought I would uh, read it, and uh, it's, it's hard to read. It's written in pencil, and um, now Petra, it's written in pencil, and uh it's not too faded, but it's a little trouble to read. But, And I'm going to read it. Uh, I've read it twice. Um, and I'm just going to read it rather than transcribe it and read it to you. Uh, I, 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 sh, 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 no. No. I'm going to have to start this video again. Stop. Get down. Shh, 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 shh. Goodness, they're so jealous. Okay. Uh, Daddy named the diary the Lore of Woodcraft Diary. Don't know why he named it that. Uh, maybe we'll find out as I read through the diary. I put it in uh, archival sleeves so that it would help protect it. Um, okay. Here, here we go. March 21st, 1930. Today I am 12 years, 10 months, and 6 days old. I got up a little early than usual and went on my corner. Played with Walter a little bit. Same after school. Went back to school and listened to radio with Howard Lutz. Cut a few little trees. I used a route for my new golf club. I went down to Louise Palmer's and ate supper, played hopscotch. March 22, 1930. Leon and I found some more roots for golf sticks, played a little golf, got a haircut, and played with Walter. I got a new open road book, April number, mm, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, the postman had taken it to Mrs. Humphrey yesterday. It had expired, so I subscribed for three years. Baum gave me a dollar after dinner. I tried to, I tried to, buy post, I tried to buy post for my garden. Petra, went down to Mrs. Palmer's and made Louise a cross. Stayed all evening. That night, I took my open roads for Mrs. Palmer to read. Louise and I smoked some grapevines. Okay, I thought I would read it first and then go back and uh, make some comments. Uh, um, now, uh, he mentions Howard Lutz. As I recall Daddy telling me, I think Howard Lutz uh, at one time back in the 50s was uh, a police chief in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, and it's interesting that he was playing golf with <laughs> a stick. <clears throat> I wonder what he used for a <clears throat> golf ball. <clears throat> and he mentions Louise Palmer. Now he and Louise Palmer were friends from a young age until they were in their 80s. And I remember Daddy saying that he had, 
they they uh, exchanged birthday cards and Christmas cards every year, and uh, Louise didn't reply to Daddy's last birthday card, and he he didn't know what happened to her, didn't know how to get in touch with her or anything. So uh, it was after Daddy had passed away that there was an article in the newspaper. And the girl that wrote the article mentioned Louise Palmer, or Louise Garrison was her married name. I immediately emailed her and told her the relationship, you know, between uh, Louise and my daddy. And uh, the girl let me know that Louise was fine. She was living in a, uh, not a nursing home, but a, it was a place for older people that were retired. And uh, she gave me Louise's number, and I called Louise, and I went and had lunch with her, and uh, it was just a nice, uh, it was a nice visit, you know, because uh, over the years, uh, it was like, it was like Louise was, was Daddy's sister, and uh, I know when... Um, Sometime after that, she called me and said that she had, or before it, at some some point, uh, she called me and let me know that she had a washstand that she wanted me to have. Uh, <clears throat> when when she and her husband Jimmy got married, uh, my great grandmother gave. Louise this washstand she my great grandmother had gotten it when she got married and Louise said well <clears throat> I'll save it uh, for Joe's my daddy Joe I'll save it for Joe's uh, firstborn child so I went and got that washstand I have it and uh, my husband noticed that one one the little door on there uh, had been replaced with a piece of plywood, and he said, "Oh, that's a shame. Uh, why would you want it?" You know, I said, oh, "Are you kidding me?" I said, "This belonged to my great grandmother. I mean, on my daddy's side, there's not a lot of uh, possessions or letters or photos or or anything from that side of the family and I was just proud to have it just so proud to have it so yeah so Louise saved that for the firstborn so that was me <laughs> uh, let's see what were some of the other things in here um, and Leon he mentions Leon Leon was his first cousin it was just the it was just the two of them uh, plus, my daddy did have a sister who was adopted when she was a baby. So it was just a, three three cousins. Uh, let's see. He played golf, got a haircut, played with Walter in the Open Roads book. I'll have to Google that to see what that was. You know, did it have stories, a lot of different stories in it? Or was it more like a magazine? I'm not real sure. Um, and he mentions Mrs. Humphrey. I don't remember any stories about Mrs. Humphrey. Maybe as I read through these, something will jump out at me. Um, and he mentions Balm, B-A-L-M. Balm was his nickname for his grandmother. She's the one that raised him. Her name was Georgia Etta. Georgia Etta Lentz was her name. And I, she gave him a dollar after dinner. I don't know why she would give him a dollar. They didn't have a lot. They were, they were very poor. Uh, let's see. Uh, he wanted some posts for his garden. Post, I would imagine he was going to have some kind of green bean or tomatoes, maybe. Uh, he made a cross. For Louise, I guess, you know, like a cross. Um, and and then I'm surprised. Uh, Louise and I smoked some grapevines. Now, that's very surprising to me because my father was not a smoker. He didn't like smoking. Uh, 
you know, my uncles would come out for uh, Thanksgiving and they smoked. And But I, I, I imagine my mother told him not to say anything because she always had a she always had an ashtray for him. And uh, but later in years, you know, they they had quit smoking, but uh, he didn't he didn't like smoking. So that is the first installment in this diary. It'll be interesting I, because I haven't read through the whole thing. It'll be interesting to see what he has to say. And I discovered this after uh, my husband and I and our two youngest children moved in uh, to the home place to take care of Daddy after uh, you know he got sick. He had dementia. And uh, as I, as I was going through you know cleaning up things and all, I found this diary. I never knew about it. Daddy never mentioned it. And I just feel like it is a real treasure to have. You know, because uh, children think of their parents as being one way. You know, their parents didn't do anything wrong. Their parents, you put them on a pedestal, you know. Uh, so to read that about Daddy and Louise smoking grapevine, I guess that's something every, uh, a lot of young people try, you know, smoking for the first time. <laughs> Ashley, uh, I, I, I would tell Mama, i say, yeah, Mama, I'll take the trash out and burn it. She would put, uh, uh, our, you know, kitchen trash and, you know, all that kind of stuff. She put them in the grocery, paper grocery bags we got from the store, and I would take that bag out to the burn pile and I'd rip off part of that bag and roll it up and try and smoke that thing. It was, <laughs> there was no tobacco in it or anything. It was just rolled up a uh, paper sack, you know. But uh, anyway, I'll do some more of these and I think I'll put them under a, a, a playlist so that they'll all be together and number them so that if anybody's interested, they can read them uh, in date order. So, uh, y'all have a good evening, a good day, and remember to be kind. Bye.